subscribe to 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. I'd like to welcome everybody tonight to Let's Talk Racing. We have Scott Allen, Jack Dodson, and Brian Morehouse and myself, Roger Brain. We're ready to rock and roll with everybody. So how y'all doing tonight, guys? I see... Well, sounds like we're all up on the chip. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, didn't, didn't you get a new uh, fan member? Or yeah, that's president? me. That's Brian, me. I'm the president. And we got... We got our <laughs> vice president over there. Dues are due next we week. Did, we did. He also has a new sponsor. <laughs> it matches well. Yeah, named, named, named after him, Goof Off. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if, if Jack touches me and stuff I can get and then this will just rub the cooties off. I don't know. That was a good idea. Try it. That was pretty good you come up with that real fast. Like that. <laughs> you want to talk about anything? Fixing cars? Well, I did get into road service last week. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> was it a good job? It didn't pay well. It did. <laughs> How was but the, the laugh was good. That was the customer. He was quiet. He was? Quiet as a church mouth. No, that's Sort of like he is now. <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot like I am right now. Oh, I was just thoroughly amazed that he could he could work on the car. <laughs> The diagnostic of a battery? I mean, he, I mean, <laughs> hey, I told him what it was before he got out of the truck. If I had paid, them. But if I had to pay him for the, you know, the time he spent on the truck, <laughs> I couldn't have afforded it. <laughs> you could have. No, because it took him forever to get that little piece out of it. <laughs> the damn, the post come right off the battery, you know, stuck into the post. The, came off the battery? Yeah, yeah. Was that that when he went to twist it like counterclockwise and clockwise yeah. trying to just turn the cable on the post. All of a sudden, the post went through. Right yeah. You want to give a big pitch to AutoZone? Yeah, make it like make <laughs> great. I'm not going to pitch it because that guy calls me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a term for that. It sucks to be you. Yeah, well, you know, it could have been worse. So, Jack, how, how long is the battery good for? How many years? I really don't know how long that battery had been in there, but it's been in there a while, but I don't know how long it's been in there. Yeah. It, it was. It was not the original. Uh, if, if you look on the top of the battery, they have these little sticker thingies, you know. Yeah, nobody uh, uses them. By, by, by the time I, I won't worry about the top of that battery when we got finished. <laughs> I know. You were quite quiet. They just you, you were not to as start vocal. and leave. He was not as vocal as he is during the show, Scott. <laughs> Let's put it that way. He says, I can't say nothing bad about Scott right now. But I, mean, I don't know if he was talking to himself or not. Trying to convince that. himself not to? And, and you know what else? What? I didn't say nothing. I told you next week it's all over. It is. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's been a full week. You gotta wait till after the show. Then it's a full week. Oh well. <laughs> I say we gotta go to Bowman Gray. I want to go to Bowman Gray. I, I mean that there. race. Well, they've got a spike, and I mean that's just. And they got stands all the way around the racetrack. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that's just it's crazy. a football field. And you want to go there to fight or? Well, I mean, we can't. Scott Promo's not running back. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott's a little big for me. I can't be fighting Scott. He's too big. Now, no. you see, y'all saw the video. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I don't even know who won the race. I just. <laughs> was there I mean, a winner? Yeah. Well, there was actually a winner? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, no, it was just I a see, light model race, right? Yeah. It wasn't nothing. It was just their weekly. Yeah. I'm just saying, really, there was a winner. I mean, yeah, the way. Oh, they, huh? And he chased him through. He, he tried to get him up when he went down through the corner and he was coming with it through the grass with a head of steam and he just barely missed him. If he'd have hit the wall, I'd laugh. But you know, that's one place they can put him in the stands. I've, ever, never, I've never been to Every you. single week. Yeah. I mean, they don't never have a problem with that. Yeah. Whether it's a local show, whether it's a touring, it doesn't matter. They always put him what in the stands. What is that? Is that like a building there? Is that like. That a, is a field, they call that the field house. What it is, is think of it like this. It's a football field in mm -hmm. August, September, and October. Then you remember how we had a track around the football field? Well, theirs is pavement. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they take those walls down, and then they put the uh, 
the po uh, field goal post in, and at a certain time of the year, they don't want you driving through that grass. Uh, I think there's like, you know, a penalty or something for driving through the grass and everything. But that's a field house. That's actually the locker rooms, training so rooms. So what's the wall then? I mean, do they have a concrete wall? They have a that... concrete, no, they have a guardrail all the oh, way around. Old and then, then it's a concrete wall going up into the uh, stands. Yeah. So, really good. It's, it's really neat. Look, I mean, I've seen it, but I've never been to a race. I don't know which truck we'll take. Ah, I know whose truck I'll suggest. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does have a new back. <laughs> so, he's all quiet. <laughs> God, I hope my car starts when I leave. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> By the way, if you're watching Twitter and Facebook, they're already commenting on y'all's video. Oh, okay. Are they? <laughs> I, thought I, I, I did have a, 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 the UPS guy come by the other day. He's like, man, I love watching y'all's videos. I hope y'all do guys do like each other. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to realize if y'all did like each other. <laughs> He's like, because that really does make the show, man. <laughs> I just laugh. I go, you couldn't do anything else but laugh at him. Je Je uh, Jesse is gonna tweeted to me from a computer. He said that he can't, can't call in his phone. Took a dive in the water with him. When he was on his vacation day, so he can't call me. So we can have fun for the next uh, seven, eight minutes talking about. We'll talk about racing. That's what yeah. the show's about. We don't need to talk about my truck no more because my <laughs> truck is fine. <laughs> it now. Thanks to somebody. Yeah, AutoZone <laughs> did give me a new battery. <laughs> I would talk about something with Scott, but I can't. I mean, with uh, Brian, but I can't figure out what we can talk about with him. Well, he was on vacation all week. Yeah, down here at the beach, having a good time, you know. That was a good time, man. <clears throat> yeah, and he didn't even invite us down for nothing. I mean, we could have broadcasted from there. Well, man, I had, I, mean, I don't know if you, you know, it's, when you go down with family, that, sometimes that's fun. Yeah, but, you know, it was like all ages. I mean, from 80 all the way on down to so How many were two. you guys are going? I think there was 14 of us. But it was fun. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong, it was fun, but it was, uh, the weather was great. I'm glad we were there th last week. Yeah, they, this just, weekend, they just evacuated. No. They did. So, I mean, that's, it's so nice down there. Yeah, that I just saw where they are. Update. It's moving closer to what they thought, closer in than they thought it was going to be. Really? So, they you know how far inland? Or yeah, I didn't, I'd, not I'd, really have to, I'd have to watch it again. I mean, watch the whole thing. I didn't. Well, we're going to be at Caraway this weekend with the Southern Modified, so it shouldn't affect us at all. We're there Friday, uh, July the 4th, so that'll be, hopefully it won't affect us, because we've been to Caraway four times this year. Has it been four? Yeah, we're there a lot. Yeah, we go there about five times a year, and I think we've been there three times and got to race once, something really? like that. We've had you know two rainouts. Caraway Speedway? Hmm? Oh, really? time he was over there. Really? Mm -hmm. So, uh, really nice place. It's just a long drive, you know, especially when you got to drive all the way down there and then it rains out, but, I mean, that's not nobody's fault. I mean, Mother Nature. So, um, looks like we'll get that in this weekend. Should be a good show. We've got 19 cars coming, and uh, it's our halfway break. This is, is the, this is when, you know, uh, Bowman Gray usually picks up during our break, and then we pick back up after Bowman's season has ended. So we'll have this when race. What is Bowman's? Do they shorten their season because of football? Uh, football. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so they end, it, they, they end theirs at the end of August. So I want to say that they're done right before Bristol, and I think we go to Bristol the 22nd, somewhere up in there. We're a midweek race for Bristol on a Wednesday yeah. night, um, the nights of the trucks. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a funny way that they have to do their season because of the football and everything else. Now, is that a high school football state? Yeah, that's that's Salem State. Yeah. Oh. yeah, and it was Salem University, what's Salem State? I can't remember. It's but it's uh, man, it's right in the middle of town. I mean, just you, you just so many college kids because it's a college town. Probably. Yeah. And it's just, man. But, I mean, yeah, but that don't have nothing to do with that, what they got going racing. on with the race and stuff. No. The track must be super flat. Oh, it is. Yeah. Totally flat. It's almost like you're running on a uh, regular football field type track that they have around the outside at the high school. And it, 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 it isn't a whole lot wider than that either. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go check that place out because it just looks so neat. And it's hard to believe how, much, how many people they pack in there, you know. Mm -hmm. For for a for a you know short track that a lot of them are struggling today, you know, for yeah. them to just be so strong. So when are they going to be back there again? 
Well, Bowman and Gray? Yeah. We race every weekend. No, I mean, oh, well, we will be back uh, August the 9th. The k and doesn't go back, no? Uh, k and already done their one show, and uh, they go one time a year. We go one time a year with a touring series, and then they have their weekly show every week. So, uh, I yeah. thought y'all had already been there with the uh, Modifieds. No, no that's their mo that was their Modifieds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they have their Burt Myers, uh, you know, Jason, Jason Myers, Myers, Tim Brown. Those are the hometown guys. Mm -hmm. uh, they, um, they they put on that weekly show, and it's a but good junior Miller. A lot of the guys that run in the, in the touring series run that during yeah. that during the, off, during the yeah, break they have, time. Yep, they have another car for that, and they usually race that. And um, you got Kyle Ebersole, you got Chris Fleming, you got uh, his son Kobe Luke. Went, Doug Kobe went down and raced some last year. I saw him. Yeah, down, he went down last year. And uh, was it Smith and all them? They, uh, John did Smith. Priest raced off and on down there. Something. Yeah, he did. He did really good. When we came there with the touring uh, division, he did very, very well. Mm -hmm. um, he's a good all-around uh, driver anyway. I mean, I've seen that kid really do good up north and down south. And it, when he drives up north, he drives for someone. And then when he comes down south, he brings his own car. So, uh, you know, those are two different cars, two different setups, everything else. So it seems like he, he's got a lot of talent. Um, I've heard that, you know, he may have a nationwide ride. Does. Um, he, with he, Tommy Baldwin. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Good for him. So I think that's one or maybe two races New well, Hampshire. I know Richmond, New Hampshire's one of them. I know I had not seen when the other one was. So I'd really like to see him do good. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's a real nice kid, got a good family, um, works hard to get where he's going. So we'd really like to see a kid like that be able to make it. Um, we got some good talent. I mean, between, you know, the Southern Mods and Northern Mods and stuff, I mean, we got a lot of young, good talent with Andy Sice, and we've had him on the show before, and, you know, the Myers boys and everything else. But still, k and is where... I mean, there's a lot of talent just yeah. spilling over in that. Y'all had Kenzie on here last weekend. Mm -hmm. and uh, Had a really good run. I tell you what, that was, you know, I said it last weekend, but if, and if she's she watching really, the, And if she's watching tonight, because I heard she does watch it every now and then, mm -hmm. I know who your boyfriend is. <laughs> but we said it last We said it, we said it last week. Yeah. Or, or last week. But I sent him a couple messages this week. And, oh, okay. uh, you got something? You, you, he I said, he's not sent them back yet. I, was, <laughs> I sent him. A, I sent him a he message that we were talking about him on the show. Uh, he already heard. He said he'd heard we were talking about. Him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told Jesse we we're going to talk bad about him too, but since he's not calling in, so. Well, I don't, I'm not going to talk bad about him. All in fun type bed, you know. I ain't gonna talk bad about Jesse. Could be, hey, could I be. I don't worse. that well. Hey. If I knew him a little better, I'd talk trash about him, but I don't know. <laughs> Brian, you get to be up front on that one. Alright, Brian, you get to be up front on that one. Well, that Jesse better than we did. Yeah, Jesse's a good kid, man. Very yeah, we got to rag on him, though. I told, I, 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 I told him we were going to rag on him since he's not calling in. Uh, and he's laughed about that. He said, yeah, go for it, have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Jesse's a good kid. Uh, was this his second year? And, um, k and uh, very, very, uh, comes from a racing family. I believe he's a third generation. Um, the one that his dad is Chad Little, who is the uh, director of Camping World Racing mm -hmm. Trucks for NASCAR. Um, Chad drove the John Deere car, from what yeah. I remember, and yeah. quite a few other you know cars throughout the years. Came from uh, the West Series and was a champion out mm -hmm. there. And I want to say that his grandfather was um, involved in racing out there, and I believe he was a champion, and uh, comes from a good line. I mean, uh, gr great kid, you know, ask him to do something, he does it. You know, being an official, that's that's the key thing. But uh, got some good equipment, and they've been racing really hard. Is he really driving for somebody, or is that a family team? I'm, I'm not really sure that's, how that's, that is. That's, that's, that's their team. That's is it? Yeah. Um, I wasn't too sure about that. I had a director tell me one time, I don't want you to call these guys by their name. And I looked at him and he goes, you better call them by their number. Because that's how I want everybody referred to as 97, 51, or whatever. Because you start saying names, you start getting personal, personable. But mm. I always, and I've always picked that up, you know. So, uh, I mean, that's very true, though. I, know, I could. Sometimes you'll hear officials say 97 or whatever. So I know me and another guy that came that's along. When, when Scott was racing the other night at, at, at Langley, I would call him by his number because I didn't want nobody to know I knew his name. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs>
You almost yeah, ran yeah. over me, man. I didn't know who you were. Yeah, I knew you did. I was sitting here talking to that guy, and all of a sudden you ran right at me, and I'm like, who is this uh, kid? Because I mean, there's like I was six laughing kids. I was kind of laughing. I said, he backed up, and I turned a little bit more. He backed up some more. He turned, I turned some more. He backed up some more. I see the lady. I'm like, that was a, uh, I tell you what, that was, y'all put on a good show that night. Everything went well. I did. <laughs> it you was did. a horrible night for I me. think you did one for you passed one car, you did good. I passed a lot to begin with, and then I got hung out, and then... Well, yeah, when, it all, when it all played out, you had one. <laughs> you had one? <laughs> <laughs> so Sorry, I put another motor on this week. I did that deal here. Uh, oh, Tuesday. that's a last night. So, anyway, this is your third one. I'm going to dump it over in the ditch. <laughs> oh, Chris, okay. What's up? What's going on in the news? Anything? There's, I don't know, there's really nothing big. We've got Daytona lost. coming up. Yeah. Daytona, yeah. and it's the night race. It's always a cool race to watch. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. I mean, if the rain, the, the rain, rain should be out of the way by that time. Today, today, uh, today was Nationwide Tech. Can you hang on a second? Yeah. 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 Was today Tech? Nationwide today Tech. Wednesday, yeah. yeah. Nationwide Tech was today, and, and it was pouring down rain. What about Home Depot pulling out after doing the new year? That's that a really good shot. Been in, been in uh, NASCAR. 1999 came yeah. in with Tony Stewart. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, that's really something with them pulling down. That's the bottom line, flashing, not the upper line. Miss Scott, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. This is Jack Dawson. I got Scott Allen and Brian Morehouse and Roger Brim with you. And uh, I, first of all, I want to say congratulations that you got one to limit in the in the hall. Thank you so much, and I tell you, it's a great honor, a big relief, and a lot of gratitude go out to a whole, whole lot of good people. Well, you, you you put a lot of effort into it. I mean, it was, you know, and, I, and I'm glad it finally, you know, it finally came to, to fruition like it did. So it's really good. Can you give us, a, I mean, a lot of people don't know a whole lot about, about Wendell Scott because, you know, it was kind of, before some people's time, but can you give us a little background on him of, you know, where he started and everything like that? Well, um, as far as racing, you know, he started right here at home in Danville, Virginia. Um, they were looking for someone who could help draw a crowd at a local track, and they had a lot of speeding tickets, so, you know, he <laughs> came to their attention, and um, he got a start that way, and he was actually a genius of a mechanic anyway, and they'd been a mechanic in the army, and his dad had been a mechanic, and all of that uh, certainly was significant and helped him along the way, you know, uh, especially never getting that sponsorship he needed and that type thing, and having to be his own mechanic, it all paid off for him. Yeah, he was, he raced basically, was started out in around the Danville area? Yeah, Danville, um, he raced in Virginia, you know, uh -huh. and not just Danville, but uh, surrounding areas, uh, raced in Staten, Virginia, and Waynesville, and, you know, places like that. Uh, then we did a lot of racing in South Boston, and so, you know, there were so many other little tracks. Now, he got a, I mean, he, he, he got a lot of outside help from time to time with some of the other teams and stuff like that. Were some, have you heard from any of those people, you know, along the way that, that, that you know, congratulate you on getting in the hall and everything? Certainly, um, you know, we have a good relationship with uh, so many people that are on part of the NASCAR family and have had down through the year. So there are many people that I'm constantly in contact with. And um, I think that our, a lot of people felt, felt the joy for us and felt the relief. And, we had some uh, very, very touching contacts, yes. So what all have you had, I mean, you, you, I'm sure you've had a lot of things you've had to do for the hall to, you know, to promote this and everything. Or, or they, Do they have a lot of things planned out for the rest of the year until, you know, until they get him in, in, in the uh, induction ceremony? You know, a, a thorough response to that would be a little premature. Uh, we have an upcoming meeting, you know, where that type of thing will be discussed. And, um, plans are being made, you know, I have a feel for some things that are going to happen, but um, everything's kind of unofficial right now, and, and so they actually meet with the families, 
and they'll uh, be meeting with us this month. So our plan will be laid out then. Now, do you have any like uh, items that are going to be going into the hall that you know of that you guys have that are going to be in the Hall of Fame that people can see? Yeah, certainly um, something will go in, uh, and that is also a part of the meeting, you know, to uh, to discuss that type of thing as far as what artifacts that uh, we have available that can go in. And, you know, we're, we're hoping that uh, recognition for Daddy doesn't stop here, and unlike drivers today who have um, plenty of racing uniforms and plenty of helmets and shoes and that type of thing, you know, uh, it wasn't like they had a whole lot of that. So I have to kind of be prepared to have things on hand to also um, or to other organizations should he be honored with them. You know, like we, we have things in different places now. You know, we have a few items in Darlington, uh, the Disney Sports Hall of Fame, uh, that type of thing. So you have to be mindful of all of that when making decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, what what year did he get started in? Daddy started in 1949, mm -hmm. um, and it was 1961, I think. I don't have that right here in front of me, but um, I think it was 61 when he started with NASCAR, and you know he in '73 um, at the Now, did he uh, always race his own cars, or did was he ever partners with anybody and raced for someone? Daddy was never officially a partner, uh, but he did have occasions where he raced uh, other cars. For example, uh, you know how some of the drivers would help each other out when someone was in the fourth race, mm -hmm. that type thing, and they not have uh, had a vehicle, you know, because of wrecks or or whatever. Um, I know he drove Doc Frost King's car uh, on occasion. He used uh, Dave Thomas' car on occasion, you know, that type thing. Uh, his dear friend Earl Brooks, um, they were so, so much like brothers and helped each other so much along the way. Um, there was a time when Daddy did have more than one vehicle running, and uh, I call, still call him Mr. Earl, and I have a regard for him. And, um, he drove Daddy's other car, you know, so naturally, and, uh, you know, some other point, that's all the one of the old things, you know, working enough to have a phone, but, um, that's, that's a little bit of that story. Now, what's your earliest memories of being able to get you the track? What track do you, uh, remember going to where you first saw, saw him race at? Oh, as a, as a little kid, I remember um, what stands out in my mind most is South Washington Speedway because it was close to home and I loved it so much. Um, Lynchburg, you know, Waynesboro, those places. So, well, I, you know, I, I pretty much remember the most of them. And as uh, time went on and I got older, I became a floor keeper. So, for the most part, we were at the track with Mary. Um There were times naturally when we went there, but more often than not we were. So do you consider, I mean, you know, it seems like back in the day it was more family. Every, you got your yeah. kids, you, you took them on out there. It seems like that's the way you and your family were, you know, going out to the track and, um, you know, enjoying the time out there. Certainly. Um, my mom always called it a family affair and, you know, no true words were ever uttered. You know, um, we always had a role uh, individually. Um, the boys, you know, worked at the shop and as mechanics and pit crew and helped drive me truck pulling the racer to the tracks and stuff. My mom supplied the food, you know, kept, kept everything together and she was a truck driver and a half, you know, whenever they had worked those long hours and in the morning had put the road and used the deadline to find that on track. You know, then it would be mommy that would always pull that racer, you know, the truck and trailer uh, to the track. And daddy would wake up sometimes, he'd look and mommy would be there. <laughs> we'd stop for gas a couple times and 
as a thing that he may not have even known that he was surrounded by it. So, um, my sister and I were scorekeepers, as I mentioned. Everybody had a role, um, and I would say each role was smaller than me, have seen was very significant. I certainly wish that that night that they won in Jacksonville, or that race that he won in Jacksonville, I certainly wish that we had been old enough to be scorekeeper at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, were you guys there at the race when he won? We weren't. Uh, they had two friends with them. Um, uh -huh. There was a gentleman named um, Willie Robinson, James Robinson, and we called him Mr. Bross, and another friend, Dick Cheney, that called Wild Boy, that would travel with Daddy and uh, help drive, and they were the two that were with him on that trip. I can remember uh, being here when the call came. Uh, at my parents' home as a kid, actually, in the dark, saying hi to seek with some friends, and the uh, call came in. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. So now with with you, you you all the work that you did to get you know get him in the hall and, and, and you did such a good job of that, do you spend any other time around the racetrack? I know I saw you at Martinsville. Um, when when Daryl Wallace won the race up there, I know I spoke to you then. But do you do you go to the races on a regular basis and and, and still involved in it? I am still involved. I um, kind of like Daddy. I race in my blood and. Personally, I really do enjoy it, even though it is not an active part any longer. Do some things with the diversity program. I've done the public relation and no. consulting, uh, you know, on behalf of my dad with uh, NASCAR for two, two years now. And I have a great relationship with the diversity program. Um, the gentleman who owns the uh, D for D team, uh, Max Siegel, you know, I, I do things with him and uh, have a very significant relationship with him as far as my work with my mom and dad legally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Max is a great guy. I've uh, dealt with him on the Canyon End tour quite a bit and um, very good for the sport and very good for the drive for diversity. Certainly. He has done well and he has, has accomplished a lot and has, um, has great things in mind to do that I, I feel confident will all come to fruition. And the, uh, the drivers who are a part of that program, you know, I applaud them for having themselves in a position to um, be selected at the combines and to keep their focus you know, and can take a, the opportunity that uh, they'll discuss to us. And I think it's so important. I, I uh, attend quite a few races. I'm sure you all probably know that mom's been pretty sick for a while now, so the tracks that I don't go to that I normally do uh, have to do with uh, illness right now. Mm. Right. Yeah, normally I'm, I'm pretty much out there. I, it would be somewhere like Atlanta, Darlington, uh, Daytona, um, Richmond, Montreal. Uh, so I've done some walking then since the latest time at Washington. Um, Dover used to, uh, of course, be urban racing leagues up there, like, you know, a lot of others do. And um, I go to Pocono. That threw me into the Dover situation. Um, so I'm pretty much out there. I'm talking about with the section that right now I'm kind of in a position where I have to try to stay as close to home as I can to come. Now, what kind of person was your, was your father? Was he a stern person or was he kind of a jokester? I mean, from seeing some of the pictures, I mean, he kind of looks like he was always very serious. <laughs> Daddy was on the scene. Um, and as far as a jokester, <laughs> it had a sense of humor uh, that, that was worth to love. And he also was a very serious person, uh, serious when he needed to be, and he was very focused. He had a lot at stake, and um, at the same time, 
be a really relaxed moment. And a lot of people are often mention, you know, being around him or even to talk to him on the phone. You know, fans will call him and talk to Daddy like they were next door. Hmm. He would be sometimes talking to him and falling asleep, and I'd be combing his hair or, or shaking him or whatever, and, you know, he still wouldn't hang up. You know, he, he never went to disappoint any, anybody, and he loved them all so much. I'm, I'm often reminded when I hear people say how Mr. Terry always got the loudest amount of applause. Um, we can always say, sign the autograph until he finished. And I'm one of those people that can attest to that. I witnessed that. And at the same time, I know that Daddy would normally get the second round of applause, but he was also still in that track sign and autograph. And that's something that I have a lot of respect for the both of them for. You know, Definitely. they truly love the fans. Well, Miss Scott, we appreciate your time and glad you called in tonight. We want to congratulate you again on, on him getting in the hall. And hope I get to see you at Martinsville and we, and we can have a talk when I get up there. Well, I look forward to it. And I, I want to thank you for uh, including me, you know, on behalf of Daddy. And, uh, you know, it's an honor and for anybody that, that gets me just right now, you know, and I want everybody to know that I take advantage of this opportunity in this platform to say thank you. You know, I, you know, I can't thank everybody individually. It's a humbling experience. It's an honor, and from my standpoint, it's also quite a responsibility. So I feel like this one is not just for Daddy and the family. This one is for everybody who's helped along the way, who's cared, and for all those people that voted, voted. How about you? He got the um, one the fan vote. You can meet up with awesome. Mm -hmm. well, thank you all so much. I hope you all have a great night. You too. Thank, thank you very much, and we'll, and we'll be watching. Thank you. Take care. Bye. I mean, that is pretty cool, and it is neat to see him in the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. Um, I think some people sport. really don't know, you know, they just know, right, or, or much about him, you know. Yeah. Kind of, kind of no, the only, a lot of things that people know about him, they reflect back to that movie that had Richard Pryor in it when yeah. he played one yeah. Scott. And that, to me, just was didn't, not the, that really did not give an accurate. Didn't give him It justice. was kind of more of a joke. And, and, and if you looked at it a little bit, you know, it was kind of, a, you know, it was play off of it. Mm -hmm. But he was a better person than what that shows. Um, even Richard Petty was, you yeah. know, very highly. I mean, oh, yeah. And I mean, you know, like she just said, I mean, there's like, being able to take time to spend with the fans. I mean, and you, you've seen this around the yep. garage. Richard Petty is one of the best. Yes, I can imagine, sure. you know, not knowing her, her father, if he was anything like that. That was just truly remarkable. But going around, short tracking, man. Yeah. Let's talk racing. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How about you? Very good. So who do we have here? Uh, Bruno Cardero. And you're a race car driver? Uh, yes, I drive go-karts. Okay. <laughs> hey, we got something in common now. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Lord. Now, now you're in trouble, Bruno. You got, yeah. you got Scott Allen. He's going to be your number one fan now. you got to watch out for him. He, he, he attempts to drive a car, too. <laughs> he passed a cart last weekend. He passed one car. There was 27 of them out there. He passed one. Uh, yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty fast. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about Scott. I ain't talking about you. But look, I see you. I, I see you have a. You have a. Um. Do you? What do you do during your normal time during the week? Do, do you? Do you? How many times a week do you race? Um. How many times a week? Uh. It just depends. Um. Uh. If I'm racing nationally, it's usually a whole week long. I'm a racing, but uh, here when it's club racing, it's usually every other week. Um. And I try to go out practice as, as often as I can. Um, so I try to, try to be in the, in the car as much as I can. It's like my little office. Well, now, wouldn't you, would, do you have any opportunity where you can help people, you know, in their racing career? Uh, yes, uh, I do. I, um, one thing that I've been starting, actually, um, is what I call the BCK Academy, which stands for uh, Bruno Carnero Karting Academy. Uh, and that's where I... Um, go out and I become a, a, a teacher um, to someone that's interested in getting into karting. Um, and I'll go out and I'll uh, do laps with them. I'll go over video data with my GoPro and I'll uh, show them where they can um, improve um, on their time. 
um, and that helps them out a lot with their carding. And I have quite a few students now, and they're all doing very good, thankfully. And um, and along with that, I've I mean I've also started a I'm starting a uh, it's called a, a foundation where I um, actually go and I help um, kids that were victims from abuse as I was. Um, and I, I go out and I, um, no charge to them, I'll go out on the track and I'll give them a lesson for free, um, and I'll, I'll show them the lines, and hopefully it gives them a new opportunity, opens new doors after all the tough times they've been through, and, um, it's just something that I love to give back to. Now, how old do you have to be to go to this school? Um, really, I started when I was, I started carding when I was four years old. Um, so as, as soon as you know the basics, gas, brake, the turning, uh, you can be in it. Um, I have a student, my youngest student currently is five years old, and he's doing very good in the in the 50cc Comer class. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd say four-year-olds, that's, that's, that's good enough to start. What's the oldest one you got in your yeah. class? My oldest currently, um, that would be Nathan, and he's an eight-year-old. Oh, he's eight. Oh, I'm well, out. We were, we were trying. I was trying to work on getting Scott in your school, but he's about fifty something, so that's not going to help, is it? Well, I'd be happy to have you my. Hey, that's quite an undertaking, though. You... If you got a cart that won't start, he'll know how to start it for you. Ask Jack. <laughs> now, uh, I don't know. I may have missed this, but how old are you, and uh, what, what's your future goals? Um. So. I'm actually 14 years old right now. I actually turned uh, 15 in just two weeks from now. Um, so I'm in my teenage years. So uh, my, my goal has always been to uh, be in racing, be in motorsports. Uh, I just like, I like how it works. I like the engines. I like the power. I like the speed. I, I like how everything, all the details in a car work together so perfectly and they perform that perfect balance um, and that's driving and you know I'd love to get anything with four wheels and anything that goes forward and that's, that's why it's been my dream ever since I started. Well uh, do you it sounds like you work on your own uh, carts I mean you that's really good I mean being able to know how to set everything up do you do your own setups and everything? Uh, I, I tend to help around a lot Oh, I, I wouldn't say a lot, but I, I do help out um, with mm -hmm. the cleaning and uh, working with the cart. Um, but whenever I'm racing on a, a national team, um, I, I, I usually have a mechanic that works on the cart with me. Um, or when I'm racing locally, it's just my dad. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I try to help out as much as I can um, on the cart so I can learn, I can learn the basics of tuning so that you know, I, I understand how it works. Right. So what what got you started in the racing, and uh, and where are you racing at? Um, well, I've always loved racing ever since I was little, and I would always watch races with my dad. And I, 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 I always loved the speed, so I told my dad um, one day, oh, I'd love, to, I'd love to race. And I would always be playing with matchbox cars, or I'd always be making car noises. Um, and my, my dad actually works for a restaurant called Brigidio Grill. Um, and he's been working there ever since I was little. So I would have to go to the meeting sometimes and it would be really boring. So I would, um, I would eat at the restaurant. So I would play with the little salt and pepper shakers. And I would do little races on the track and make car noises. And the owner of, uh, of Brigidio Grill, uh, which is a Brazilian steakhouse, the owner, Ivan Yacura, um, noticed my passion for racing ever since I was little. So he went and he bought me my first go-kart. And uh, I've been, after that, we did a couple practice sessions. I was quick. Uh, I was started getting more into it. Um, and n none of this would be possible. None of the, the karting or uh, all the opportunities I've had would have been possible without Ivan Yachara with Rodigio Grill and other sponsors like uh, Wilson Miller Sports, um, or Shark Savers, Kimber Cable, um, those are just a few of my many sponsors that help me out. Now, uh, you said and we're, we're starting to notice more and more racers are, you know, into their education and everything. Tell us uh, how you're doing in school and, uh, you know, if you have future plans with uh, anything 
with school besides racing? Um, well, school does get difficult um, with all the time consumption that the, the racing takes. Um, but it's all worth it um, for for me to be able to sit in the car. Um, I I actually my parents aren't that wealthy, so um, I fundraise for my my racing. And what I do is Rodizio Grill and I think chair. They supply me with uh, twenty five dollar gift certificates uh, to the restaurant, and I go out almost every night, um, five days a week, uh, from about six o'clock to nine o'clock at night. And I just go fundraising door to door, um, trying to raise up as much money as I can um, to race national races and to race local races. And there's currently there's currently a big race uh, that's called the Grand National. Um, we're just going to be drivers from all around the country for to compete. And I'm I'm currently still short on money, and I'm going out every night to raise the money to get there. And I mean, yeah, school does get difficult. Um, with everything I have to do, the fundraising takes a lot of, of time, the, the carding takes up a lot of time, but, you know, if it's, if it's really what you want to do, if racing is what you want to do, you got to give it your all, and that's what I do every day, that's what I do. So where, where are you from? Um, I was, I'm originally from Brazil, um, but I actually moved to the United States when I was just 10 months old, um, and I currently live in, in Utah right now. Okay. I'm impressed. You, you, I you need some driving lessons done. Well, you're easily impressed, though, you know. <laughs> uh, she's a whole lot further along than I am. You ain't kidding. Uh, where, where would you, what kind of series would you like to move up to in, in time? I mean, do you have, a, do you have a thought in your mind where you'd like, what you would like to do later on? What kind of series? Open wheel, stock uh, cars? Uh, open, open wheel, is, it's, it's always been a dream. Uh, I'm sure it's. Uh, I'm sure it's a lot of people's dreams, but um, really for me, any anything with four wheels that goes forward, that's my motto. Anything with four wheels that goes forward, that's that's fine with me. I'm happy with that. Um, so as, as long as I'm in a race car, I'm happy. Now, when you do these national events, are you using your cart, or are you just hiring a team and, and showing up there and using their stuff and, and their mechanic? Uh, no, I, I actually have um, four cars of my own. Um, two of them are for the the karting school that I talked about earlier, um, and two of, or sorry, three of them are for my karting school. I use one of them to instruct on, and then I have one um, that's called Desiree. I named my car. So, uh, she's called Desiree, and uh, she's a she's a fast beauty, and uh, that's who I use to race and compete with in national races, and uh, I've been. She's been with me for a year now, about so. Um, yeah, so I use my I use my own equipment. Um, I just join teams and they help me out, and that's how it's been going. Come on, I had something else when I just went blank. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what what races you got coming up? How's your summer uh, schedule look? Um, uh, right now the in two weeks the Grand Nationals. It's a it's a big national race. Um, there's there's drivers from all around the country, the best drivers from all around the country. No, now, where's that at? No, you've got it. Well, they didn't invite me. <laughs> it's actually going to be here in Utah, uh, luckily, so that helps me out with airfare tickets. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's a positive. But mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be here in Utah at Middle Motor Sports Park, which is an awesome facility. Um, if, you ever, if you ever happen to be in Utah, go stop by. It's awesome. Um, and it's going to be here in Miller, uh, and there's, gonna, it's, there's probably going to be up to 400 drivers um, overall, uh, and I'll be competing in there and hoping to do the best I can. Now, uh, the track at Utah, Miller Sports Park, uh, road course, isn't it? Uh, yes, there's, the, there's the, the big course on the, which is for the, the cars, and there's also the kart track, um, and it's, it's an amazing facility um, for sure. For sure. Now, are you doing mostly road racing, or are you doing circle track stuff? Uh, I I actually do the road. I do the um, the road racing. Okay. So there's there's uh, there's the circle track and then there's it just depends on the track layout, but it's usually about uh, a minute long for for laps. Um, that's that's usually what the laps average. Um, and yeah, so it's a, it's a it's a road course. Okay. Now, have you run run a this track before? The one at the nationals are at. 
social media, how can your fans or possibly new fans like Scott follow you on the, on the internet? Um, if you'd like, you can uh, uh, follow me um, with some of your requests on Facebook. It's just Bruno Carnero Carding, um, and it's B-R-U-N-O, and then Carnero is C-A-R-N-E-I-R-O, and then Carding is K-A-R-T-I-N-G. You can follow me on Facebook. Or also on Instagram, I'm Bruno Carnero 21, um, and also uh, my my uh, website is brunocarneroworld.com. Good deal. Hopefully, you have a whole bunch of numbers start popping up here. Yeah, hopefully it'll be nice. I tell you what, we appreciate you calling in and yeah, I'm gonna send you a friend request. Don't don't deny me now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to thank um, Chris Wolf uh, for the opportunity that he's been giving me and having me on the show, and I'd like to thank you guys as well for giving me the opportunity to be talking with you guys today. No well, problem. Well, good luck. We definitely want to speak to you more in the future and hope to hear good things. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. How much is a ticket to you for his cart? <laughs> oh, she's pretty good. Jack, how much is a ticket to Utah? I don't know. You know? I was just wondering. He's got. You know, they got, they got a great, I was slow on that one, you know? 14. Oh my uh, goodness. But look, we need to drink beer or something. Hey, get him a bus ticket or a train hey, ticket. Look, it takes look, a lot longer to get there. Before I get there. Well, hey, look, but I'm going to. You know, you was talking about there's 400 carts going to be at that what national. Ain't that a sheep? Got it. Huh? Mm -hmm. What? No, no. Okay. Anyway, there's 400. Y'all got. Y'all have lost me. I was. I had a real good train of thought here. I, I, I was gonna get your train of thought. <laughs> then derailed the boy off the track. But it, it, 400 carts there. That's a lot. That's a lot of carts. Now I figure if you went out there, you'd finish 399 at least. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be able to. I mean, I'm gonna be able to pay it, pass at least one of them. <laughs> but when you turn around and go backwards on the track. Well, you do go backwards on a road course, so I'd be right at home. Yeah, but I'm talking about the way that you're not supposed to be going. You seem to do that yeah, that's a lot. only if somebody makes me mad. <laughs> now, you can't be beating up on these eight little... Here you, you are, are here you are in my might... 40s, and this kid's 14. You're going to yeah. say, if he makes you mad, you're going to run <laughs> Hey, you know what's going to be sad? Is it'll take only two or three of them to gang up on him and kick his butt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How would you be able to come back and tell us about that? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, if you ever go out there to race on them go karts out there, I'm going to find a way to get there. Uh, yeah, you would have to with a good battery. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't I'm drive my wife and somebody says, God, I hope my car starts. <laughs> I wouldn't drive out there, Brian, but I tell you what, if your tires are flat and you leave here tonight, it wasn't me. <laughs> Hey, hey, Brian, you did notice I disappeared for a few minutes. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about here. Yeah. Uh, I'm staying in Hampton, Virginia tonight. We're eating a Smitty's Butter Burger. Uh, put it to you this way, uh -huh. man. Uh, Miller Sports Park. I heard a lot of good yeah. people. Uh -huh. I believe Kane Inn used to race there with the yep. West. I'm mm -hmm. not sure if they still do. Yeah. But uh, I heard it's beautiful. And I've been to Utah one time, and that, that's a beautiful place. So then you know how much plane ticket is? No, nah, I, rode, I rode the short bus there. <laughs> so, but it was a great field trip. But... Uh, yeah, I tell you, it was um, it, it was pretty out there, man. I tell you. So I didn't realize he was from Utah. I thought he was uh, from California or something like that. So the Carton, tell us a little bit about Carton, man. It seems like Carton is where where the where the big action's at. It's where the fun. I mean, it's fun. Yeah. I mean, it, it's. Great I mean, because y'all guys seem like y'all had a great time. Everything we else. We always have a great time, whether we're racing or not. We try to have a good time, but it is a lot of fun. It's not super serious. There are some guys that are very serious about it. Right. I'm not. You know what I mean? I'm not here to have a good. I'm not. I'm not here to have a good time. <laughs> you don't ever get mad. Scene oh, here, yeah. Yeah, you, you only get mad with arena racing. Well, that's a little more contact. Wait a minute, Brian. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. 
you were not over there and privileged to the conversations that I was having <laughs> with some of the people that he races with. Okay, so okay. there's some different thoughts. A whole lot of different thoughts. <laughs> okay. He's got like five teammates. Four. But the four. four. There's five of y'all, but why was he all the way? Wait a minute. I'm, I'm getting ready to tell you. The team's up here. The, 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 the good ones were all up here. <laughs> and he was in the back, but yeah. there was one right behind him that, you know, she didn't have a good qualifying run. Right. So I went and talked to her. I said, you know, you going you gonna to push Scott? She said, I ain't pushing him. <laughs> so if your own teammates don't like you, <laughs> and, the te and the owner says he cries all the time. <laughs> well, I haven't been crying the last year. <laughs> well, shit ain't been fast. <laughs> so now, now, arena racing and uh, champ carton, which one do you like better? Oh, that's tough, man. Um, I will say I'm starting to get... A little burnout on the arena. Okay, doing it. Being upside down test to do that. <laughs> and, not, and nobody liking you out there. That's not good <laughs> no, the last race I had a whole bunch of people say I did a good <laughs> job, <laughs> surprisingly. <laughs> but uh, but it is a lot of fun. I mean, then again, when it gets going again, it's fun again. And it's like anything else at the end of the season, you kind of need a break from it. Well, you're doing it year round. I right, found so out when I was stopped. doing when I was doing line lane, and we went into a rain race. You didn't really have no break. No, there's no. We break. had that Christmas break, and maybe I don't even think we had a Thanksgiving break. I think we raced at Thanksgiving back in uh, 2005 or whatever. But it just it just seemed like it was constantly year. Yeah, round. and this year we started late, so we ran further. And so I mean, the cart season. Yeah, I mean we we raced until May. Wow. So which one do you spend more time working on? Cart, rain yeah, racing so cars. Far. I mean, having to go home and really work on it. Jack says you don't work on it. <laughs> <laughs> I work more on the cart. Uh, me and Mark do a lot of with the carts um, and, and try different stuff. Usually, right, I'm right, kind right. of the Why is it not faster? I think because of the motor we have. We switched motors this year, um, and I think that's been the biggest thing. Um, Inquiry we'll minds. find out. Inquiry if you were to get a quality crew chief, as in Jack Dobson. That you would be able to. I, we would win so many championships. Do you think you would come out of retirement or, you know, to help a. I didn't, help a, I didn't mean Fred. I didn't mean to say Fred. Help a colleague. A colleague, yeah. yeah. Someone that he knows. Look, we say you're an associate. Just be a nice guy, right? I, I would rather help the girl that drove the people. But you know. <laughs> I don't know if he set it up after about ten laps, it might start really turning left and uh -huh. pull into the pits. What do you think your conversation on the radio would be with Jack? <laughs> I, said, I don't this know. Is PG. This is PG. We'll talk about this in heaven. <laughs> but I think I know what it would be like. And it, it would probably be more trash talking on I, the radio. I was trying my best to get to the arena race this year because I told him I wanted a radio uh, when I got to the arena race. Of course, I never made it, so he never got to hear. And of course, I'm kind of glad I didn't go to the last one because I probably had to fight for that. But it was a little rough. <laughs> Did you get a police escort out? No, but there was a police escort for a while there until we left. Now you were there. Race is getting rough. You were there in 2005 yeah. with, the, with the arena racing, mm -hmm. and uh, Travis Miller oh, yeah. <laughs> was involved, and in, in all that that group. Ooh, were you at the Coliseum the night the big fight broke out? Yes. Yep. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Jack was in it too. Did you have to escort him out? No, I don't think I had to escort Jack. No. Uh, <clears throat> guy's bigger than me. I don't go for that. <laughs> they can fight one of their other. You now, now, let's get this straight. I did not fight. I just picked the guy up and moved him out of my way. That's all And I did. couldn't help it that he landed on a car. <laughs> you, now you like you said, no wonder nobody knows why I, run. I didn't run into Scott. I was just trying to get back to the pits, and he was in my lane. <laughs> and that's pretty. Him. That's pretty bad, though. I, 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 and that, that's actually what really happened. I mean, the guy fell out of your hands. That's a story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was just kind of moving him out of the way uh -huh. because the fight was over there. But the kid was only fourteen. You didn't have to sleep. No, no, no. The, the guy I moved was a lot older than fourteen. <laughs> but the thing about it is, the people in the stands. Dave Talman was in the stands yeah. that night. Okay. And I done pitched this guy out of the way, and of course, you know. Oh, not he pitched him. <laughs> See, in a court of law, you got to stick with the story. <laughs> yeah, the, the story keeps never changing. Never the statute of limitations has run out. They have never been through a divorce. <laughs> but anyway, I moved him out of the way. But before I could get out of that arena, 
I started getting a phone call from Charlotte. It already made its way down there. And the person on the other end of the phone, which was my son, said, Dad, why are you throwing people around at the arena race? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, uh, when, when I got the call to work arena race, and I forget what year it was, Ricky Dennis was bringing it to Norfolk, and Kenny Lee called me, and it must have been 2004, I can't remember, but he was like, just help me for a couple of races, getting this thing off the ground, everything else. Well, we didn't go through procedures or anything like that. Well, first race, car flips. Man, I'm panicking because you're thinking, you know, and at Langley, you know, you need to go ahead and be careful getting them out, get, turning the car over. Well, four of uh, three other guys and myself, we went and got the car turned over, and then the kid just took one off. And it was amazing. Then I remember, and I, I don't know if it was Travis Miller or who it was, they jumped out of the car, and they were going to go fight. And he was small, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, he went to one side, I went to the left. He went to the right. But then he saw an opening between my legs, and he was going up through there, and then I grabbed him, and I, I can't remember if it was him or who it was, but the, the crowd went wild because they were like, they were wanting that kid to go get the other one. And uh, It was wild back then. Oh, yeah, that, they used to call here, that like, Barnum and Brother or they whatever were, circus, you know, yeah. with the Well, Dem, you, had, you had guys like Denver Alvis, he wanted to fight. Yes. Every, week, every week he was out there, oh, he yeah. wanted to fight. And then and Travis. And, you well, know. that's who Graham worked for, the kid that said that there was... At the racetracks, that he's won a bunch of, he works on arena cars. That's who he learned everything from. From I was, you know, they, he was. I mean, I've 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 seen him get thrown out three or four times. Is there, and and then the night Nick Smith went up there, he was racing. Mm -hmm. and Nick Smith was running the, the uh, arena cars, and somebody just kind of gingerly pumped okay. him pretty good. And next thing I know, they they were <laughs> they had him up like this and taking him out. <laughs> Yeah, I tell you what, I mean, it was really cool to go from Norfolk to Hampton. I really wish they would have been able to keep it down in the Hampton Roads area, yeah. but what made them end up going up to, to Richmond? Just interest or <clears throat> I, I know no. there was some buyout or management? I don't changeover. know exactly because I wasn't involved prior to that, but I know uh, Blake Murphy had yep. it. And then, I, of course, Ricky's story and who knows uh, I guess it was Blake and then somebody else and that other person had passed away or something okay. so then it was all left on Blake um, and I think Blake was just burned out burned out yeah. over over it so then Ricky took it over to, or took that franchise back over and it's, you know, it's easier for him to do it from, from Richmond because he's from that area yeah. but he's, he's, he's tried to expand it out yeah. and it's not worked anywhere else Charlotte Michigan um, I think those two ring a bell, and I actually I think I first moved down to Charlotte um, in 2007. Um, they were at the what was called the Bojangles Arena. Mm -hmm. It was a good little place. Um, I was down there for the first race at Charlotte. So when Tony first, Stewart, when Tony Stewart, and, uh, yeah. and all them were down there, and Matt Midget. <laughs> he said Matt Midget tried to wreck Tony Stewart. Matt Midget, he he did bump him up out of the way and everything, and then Tony kind of completely. Destroyed his car, <laughs> and they interviewed Tony, and he says, "Well, some little punk thought he was gonna push me around." <laughs> yeah. I think just that area is just so saturated with racing. I mean, you got the carts, you've got um, the summer shootout with the uh, Bandoleros, the Legends, and you know that's down at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Then at that time they had Concord Speedway. Hickory wasn't far away. Then you had the Charlotte Big Race. Mm -hmm. I think it was. I think you, you saturate the area with so much racing. But that first night at Charlotte, <clears throat> it was jam packed. Yeah, yeah, people coming out. I mean, there was yeah Tony Urey and I, mean, I sat beside Tony Urey at the at the at the, at the arena races. Uh -huh. I mean, he, the the crowd was unbelievable. And it was everybody in racing was there. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm surprised it really doesn't do better than it has. Or and I think some of it is is just the the market that we have right now. It's still kind of soft. Kind of, yeah. Um, but, you know, Ricky's got some big fish uh, coming to our stuff, and I think they've had some interest for some franchises again. Good. And from my understanding, the, the people in Michigan, they kind of wanted to run it their, their self and, and didn't really want to... Stay with the game plan that he yeah. had developed. So that kind of... And I know at the time, but just before the market crashed, I know they were getting ready to, like, fly everybody out and ship a bunch of cars out in the trap to... Uh, Wow. Vegas, 
And, and yeah, Vegas I remember reading something to, about that. It's supposed to be, and then the market just kind of crashed, and I just never. And Vegas is not one of the greatest areas. I mean, you think about it, I know they got the economy with uh, the casinos and stuff, but the sporting environment isn't as big because a lot of people out there were losing their homes, everything else. So, um, yeah, when the market tanked in 2007 and 8, it really tanked out there. And, so and that's probably. In the, in, the, in the cup race, when they had the cup race out in Vegas, it does not pull very well. Really? Well, this year it really didn't. I mean, this year mm -hmm. Lee said it was built. I mean, really? he said you could throw a rock up in there and probably wouldn't hit nobody. So, well, I imagine most people there on a on a vacation of some sort. They're really not. You know, there's only a few people to go there for a race. Yeah, but it's a beautiful track. Oh yeah, <laughs> beautiful facilities all the way around. I've been there, and it's uh, it's it's over there on the other side of the Air Force Base. I mean. Great way to get to it, get out of there, everything else, you know. And when you look at a racetrack, and that's the reason I look at Richmond, and I think those police officers do such a great job. They do. With everything Richmond. that they do, Richmond is in the heart of everything, the track. And there's so many areas around to be able to get out of there. But those cops do an awesome job. I mean, I think I've had two times that I've, you know, really got caught in traffic. But other than that, I've, I've really... Over getting the last there, years, generally leaving... You're out of there in no time. Yeah. For the most part. I got really upset because uh, she was standing, we had a campsite on the other side of the track, and I was trying to get away from the track. I got, I broke away early, and I was like, watch, and we'll get back to the campsite. Couldn't go that way. So then I got loaded in the GPS and went all the way around. They blocked traffic, getting back to the campsite. I drove for two hours. Finally got there, and I was like, well, I'm glad to see you got off. I was off two and a half hours ago. Yeah, you might as well so, walk. Yeah. <laughs> let me tell you a story about... Don't say that. That's what she told me let to me do. Tell you, let, day off. let me tell you about a story about Charlotte. My son has this thing about coming out of Charlotte. You know, we're going to get out of there quick. You know, he, he knows the way well, always Everybody, because it's your home track, thinks they know the way to get out. Yeah, and, we were, and he was parked right there beside the track, but we weren't. We were parked in a field over in front of the track. So y'all were over near the drag strip. So he said, get in the car with us, I'll take you over there. Oh, Lord. What was, he what was it? An hour and a half later, it we finally it. made it to back to the front of the racetrack. We and we stopped. Mm -hmm. Now get this now, and I'm going to tell a story on somebody else in this room. Mm -hmm. We pulled up to the front of the racetrack, and we just said, well, we can see the truck. We can see the truck from where we were. Mm -hmm. It was me, my son-in-law, and him. We... Pulled up, uh, Lee's driving, and his girlfriend's in the car with us, and all of a sudden the doors pop open, we're going to run. Right. And the police officer said, no you're not, get back in that vehicle. And somebody got into an argument with the police officer. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he let you get out of the truck? He said, you will not get out of this truck, and if you don't get back in this truck, I'm going to arrest everybody in here and take the vehicle too. I'm to the vehicle. Wow. He was serious. So we were all like, get back in there, because he was still arguing with him. But you know, I didn't realize this, and like I told you, I saw you up in Richmond. Worked the uh, the events the night before and everything, and uh, had the Sunday Saturday race off. Man, them cops have to put up with some stuff. Yeah, oh, they do. Man, yeah. we, we drove the golf cart down there, and thank goodness I was driving. And um, everybody with me, just blah, 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 blah. It's just like, well, these people ever be quiet. But turn here, go here. There's a cop. I can't go there. Oh, you can go there. Now, I'm going to have a little bit of respect. You know what I'm saying? So, I love Richmond, but this this past trip to Richmond when I was leaving the night after the cup race, mm -hmm. I'm pulling out of the parking lot, and this guy comes up behind me, and he's flashing his lights. It's as hard as he can flash his lights at me. And I stop. And he gets out, and I get out, and he says, um, do you know there's somebody laying in the back of your truck? And it was a drunk in the back of my truck. <laughs> it, really? It was, and if he had not, if I had not seen it, I took him back to the alleyway. <laughs> it wasn't the kid you saw on the bike earlier? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Where was the bike story from? We had a show. A bike story? Dover. Wasn't it Dover? Oh, you, oh yeah, well, the security guards there. Pretty scary. hard on you. Yeah, they didn't tell me I could. Well, sort of like arena officials are when you not don't go the wrong, wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they don't care. <laughs> that's why. That's why it's just three ring circus. <laughs> nah, Dover did just a. We rode our bikes over to. We camp over behind the mall. Yeah. We ride our bikes over to see. I'm not walking all that damn way. So we rode our bikes over there, and then when we're coming back, guys, security's like bicycles, not motorcycles. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. He's like, you can't come through here. I'm like, I just rode through there five months ago. He's like, well, you're not going through there now. 
I'm thinking you fucking asshole. <laughs> so he's like, you got to go all. You got to go out to the street. And I'm like, you can't go that way. The only way you can go back is through that way. He's like, well, you ain't going. I said, okay. And I rode my ass through there, and he rah, 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 and I just rode a couple of minutes. <laughs> so was he a security guard? Huh? He's one of a rent a cop. Uh, well, you know, when I first said. went to Charlotte, it was so hard to get in the race. Everybody moves to Charlotte to get in the race, and everybody's got a friend. Yeah. Yep. I have friends sometimes just isn't the right friend to get you in the door. Mm -hmm. So I went down there and um, I left Langley and I was like, I've got to get myself in there. So I worked for Charlotte Motor Speedway as oh, a part timer. And you know, I'm not taking over the people. Well, the thing is, low. you come across so many people in a day's call. time. Yeah. You don't have many people like at the men's bathroom. M E N, right there. Daytona. You know, and Daytona. then you come across stuff. Daytona. So you know, not taking up for the cop or anything, but it is like you get some of the weirdest yeah. situations. Yeah. Um, and it, it can be. I can just imagine what those guys go through. But you know, Charlotte's pretty good. I mean, they are, and they staff very heavy. I couldn't believe the amount of people we had for that weekend. And uh, but. My advice is, if you want to stay in racing, do something like that because you meet all kinds of people. Oh, and, they, yeah. and, and racing's all about networking. You've got to network, whether you're a driver, you're a crew member, or whether you're a, someone trying to jump into it. Just because yeah. you go to school and you learn a lot about cars, that does it's not, not guarantee you, know you a job. You've got, you got, you got to be in the right place at the, the right, right time, time to get yep. in. And fortunate, I'm fortunate enough to say that my son was in the right place at the right time mm -hmm. a couple times. but. He, he got in and now he's in. So, I mean. And you just proved yourself. And, you know, next thing you know, people see it. And then, uh, you know, team wants you and everything else. I mean, it's it's all about networking, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's it's amazing because people will call me all the time and say, oh, I want to get into racing. It's like, man, you've got to really get out there and network. Um, one of the things that I did, I hate to say it, I mean, I went on Facebook and I was friending people and asking them this and that. I wasn't asking them to take my resume, but I wanted them to be able to give me advice. Yeah. What do? What can I do? And, um, you know, when I first walked in uh, to the offices down there in Concord, one of the girls heard my name as they were introducing me. And she goes, oh, I know him. He sends in a resume every month. You know, that's the way you get it. You know, you've got but to sometimes be persistent. You gotta be yeah, you, sometimes you got to be relentless. Yeah. Um, it only took 20 of them to get him on the show. Okay? Mm -hmm. 28. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's okay. funny, I, I got a, a friend <laughs> of mine. I must have said back. <laughs> uh, she is, I don't know, she works for, uh, what's the clothing line? They're out in, the, uh, oh God, they do the interiors on some Fords that he used to. I was going to uh, say Victoria's Secret, Bauer. but I reckon that's yeah, not it. Eddie Bauer. Yep. Eddie Bauer. And, um, she used to work local here, and the lady told her, says, look, this is a great place to start your career. It's a great place to end your career, but if you want to do something, you're going to have to move. So apparently she did the same thing. She kept sending a resume to Eddie Bauer and kept sending it, kept sending it. And finally the lady called her and says, look, we're going to do an interview over the phone, and either this is going to be it. <laughs> this is your shot. One time shot. <laughs> or we're not going to get no more resumes. You know, right. We're going to do an interview. This is your shot. Don't Make send the more. If, if you don't get hired, don't keep sending. In, you know, don't keep yeah. sending your resume. And she got the job. And, and they moved her out there, and she's doing really well. And they've already promoted her twice. And, and this is about a year ago. Um, and, and making really good money and, and doing well. But I do want being really relentless. Enjoy. That's what it's all about. People don't understand it. It's, you know, sometimes I've heard the stories. People say, "Oh yeah, I knew somebody, and they got me in the next day." I've never known of it like that, but right. I'll believe them if that's what they were trying to convince me. But I know for myself, for others, and everything else, it just it takes time. It takes time to network, yeah, know you're, people. You're, you're, you're one of how many? What? Thousands that wanted a right. job. You know, and I mean, you think of like just like your son. I mean, you're you're auditioning every weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, you you mess something up. That that mm -hmm. could be the end. Yeah, that could be that last weekend. Well, just ask team. the guys on Harvick's team here. So, <laughs> we were talking about that just earlier. follows him, it seems like. I think he just over, you know, honestly, I think he overreacts to an extent. And that's just his competitive side, but he overreacts a bit and it becomes bigger than, than I think, what it initially is. But, you know, you know, we've been around the sport a long time. Me and you were close to the same age and hey. Grandpa over there. Uh, sorry, buddy. I had to do that. I was, yeah, yeah, Brian started. <laughs> okay. Scott Allen. <laughs> 
see how this is working out. We only got two members, but we are up where we're going. We got five by next one more. Yeah. So I told you I'd pay your dollar fifty a day. No, thank you. It's only a dollar fifty a year. No. Okay, but no, really, you think back on it, and I know. Not more. <laughs> if you think back on it, and I know we didn't have the in-car cameras back then, and the coverage like we have nowadays, but the guys didn't seem to complain as much. Yeah. And you know, yeah. have a problem with it being tight or loose. You drove it, and you drove it hard, and you mm -hmm. drove it till the end. You know, um, my family was real good friends with Junie Dunleavy and uh, with Dick Brooks driving for him. I mean, it wasn't like you know he he was a top runner, but I mean he stayed out there and he he raced with his heart. Mm -hmm. And you know, at the end of the race, he may be three laps down, but with that team, that, they felt good about it. Right. And, you know, it was good to be able to leave a track with a bunch of those guys. And I felt like we almost won. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he finished 15th. But uh, nowadays, you know, if you ain't in the top five and the car is too tight and I can't. Well, that's like when, when Lee was with James Finch. They, they were at Bristol. And I'm not going to call the driver's name. But anyway, the driver come in. He said that pedal needs to be moved over a quarter of an inch or whatever. And this needs to be this way and this needs to be that way. Well, they go and start getting all the stuff to move. They're going to weld this stuff up. And, the, you know, go and, the James. James. and James stood there and he says, what is going on? And Nick and all of them said, well, we're getting ready to move some stuff around. And he said, no, wait a minute. Oh, 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 oh. And he, went over, he said, what's, what's the problem? And the driver told James what was going on. He said, first of all, let me tell you something. And I was standing right there when it happened. First of all, let me tell you something. I pay you to drive the car, not redo the car. Right. Now, get in there and drive the car and just deal with what you've got to deal with. Because we're not moving pedals for you. We're not doing all that. Get in there and drive the car. And he did. And see, there's nothing even, wrong even, though, even though you don't think about it, just moving some of that stuff around will affect the car weight. Well, he stuff is that in there, too. James so. Fitzgerald yeah. did said again, he said, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I pay these guys to drive. Yeah. And, drive what I give you. And you're, you're going to have to go with what we got. He did that to Landon Castle at Richmond. <clears throat> he told Landon, Landon was complaining about the car. He told Landon, he says, meet me in the, oh. meet me in the hauler. And he brought Nick and everybody to the hauler. And he said, now here's the, here's the deal. You either drive the car and shut up, mm. or you can get out and I'd find somebody else to drive it today. Yeah, what that's do you not want, a problem. What do you want to do? Yeah, there's, there's five other guys sitting at the gate waiting. Landon did not... Right, not one more time. Not one time. Yeah, but I mean, sometimes, well, I mean, that's him. He's a kind of a no nonsense guy. And so yeah. is Bill Mullis. Yeah, Bill, yeah. Bill's a no nonsense. It, he it, is. It, it was funny because at the cart meeting, somebody was a little smart to him. Huh. <laughs> you know, that didn't go yeah. over well. Bill's like, if you don't think I'll kick you out of here, ask the Danny White. Danny White's been banned <laughs> from kart racing for like 10 years. I, it operated the Danny at your race. Yeah. And I said, Danny, why aren't you racing? Like, I'm not allowed to race here. Don't even talk to me about it. And I was like, somebody walked up and goes, oh, it's not good. So yeah, yeah, He's allowed to come back, but he's not allowed to drive. Did you, yeah, did you pay any attention to that night at the racetrack when they had the kart driver's meet? Did you even pay attention to that? Nah. Do you know the K&M guys had a driver's meet? Yeah. Lasted, lasted what? 15 minutes? Yeah, 20, 15, 15 20. I went over and, and the the other guys at Langley, the regular over at Langley, they're, they didn't, I don't think they were over there more than 10 minutes. Yeah. But they put them guys in them go-karts, mm -hmm. had them on the front straightaway at a driver's meeting out there, and it took 35, 40 minutes for them to go down. And they said they were explaining every single rule to Scott. Because he didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> or did they start him by positions, talk to him as in positions? No, they he was in the 29th out of the 30, he couldn't what hear. This, what this guy, what this guy that, that knows him real well said they were really sitting there and explaining to Scott what he had to do. <laughs> well, you know, I'm slow. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say that way. <laughs> well, that was evident. <laughs> so, Speaking of slow, have you seen the new Challenger SRT? Yes. The one that pumps out 707 horsepower one? Uh, I've seen it in a magazine. 2015 coming You've out. Seen, have you seen it on the road? No, no yeah, you won't until August. You can well, see it up on the screen. What do you want me to do with this wow. financial? Put it on my cart? He, he I think that's what we should get as company cars, guys. Right yeah. there. Yeah. Roger? He yeah. won't even get us glasses. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he I, said I, that I ordered three you, weeks I, ago. I texted him and said, Remember, you, you told us that's how your text don't go through. 
I know. You know what That's exactly what he's saying. Ah. <laughs> I'm sitting here. I've got it on my phone sitting there, too. Mm-hmm. So I'm about ready to call him and say, where are those glasses at? Mm-hmm. And we want our mug on the website like everybody yeah. <laughs> I, I came in tonight, and, some, and, and two people were already here, and I ain't going to call their names. But they're two already, and they said, well, so-and-so said they couldn't, they weren't going to call in until 8.30. That's what time you told me. And then he could tell me, well, you know they don't get you. And I had the email. I had everything right here on my phone. So, I mean, the person knew. I don't know what they were trying to insinuate. You know, mm-hmm. you, have, you, have bad talk to you, buddy. You, you notice I see that a lot. And Brian's beginning to join in. <laughs> and and he does not want to get on my bad side. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no I, I was going to take you home if your truck don't start tonight. <laughs> that means I would have four flat tires. But the whole reason I'm doing it. I don't know why I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's a lot, it's a lot, lot of fun. fun. Yeah, that's the, reason. the first two weeks, we really picked on him hard. I actually called Roger up on a Thursday and I said, Do they really get along? Because if you Let want me to sell you, I don't think they really do, but, <laughs> you know, their phone but it works. So, that was so funny. The third week, you y'all seemed to get along a little bit better, and then you stuck him over there in the corner. I mean, he was you could see half of his face <laughs> on the screen. I was like, he doesn't like it. So now we get to pick on the big guy. You know what I'm saying? So, I've had a, I had a guy in New Hampshire send me a message. He said, I really hope you guys like it. <laughs> he said, this is it's, real. It's funny, though, because and, and somebody, I, I don't really think about it like that. But. Somebody at Langley said, they really like the show when you and I go at each other. Like that. <laughs> they said, that's the only reason they're still watching. <laughs> Uh, that's so funny, the UPS guy. He's like, I really hope y'all do like each other because that's really the whole reason I watch. <laughs> now, by he the said, way, you should at least let everybody know that y'all do like each other. Well, we don't, so if <laughs> you will join Scott Alapapa, <laughs> hey, you know what? We you will know? even waive your first <laughs> year of <laughs> Nope. We won't make you take an office. I wasn't going to do <laughs> Hey, I was thinking, you know, we're watching, they'll start asking how much you're going to pay him to join. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's yeah. talking about he was going to the arena race. I figured the first race this year he'd be there. He's got to be there, and I'm getting my shirt. And <laughs> was it the first security of Scott Allen? <laughs> <laughs> did you need him that night, or did you wait till the third or fourth week before you did all that? <laughs> I waited till the last. Right. <laughs> so. there, there was somebody was asking you, uh, don't you know what them brush cleaners for t- battery terminals are for? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> but we're not going to acknowledge that. <laughs> We're not going to acknowledge it. <laughs> I didn't catch all the Twitter ones. <laughs> that was a good time. Yeah. All right, well, it's a wonderful show tonight. Where's Robert, where'd Robert Richards go? We I just got to talk, and we never talked about him no more. He, he, told, he, he originally t- said he was going to be heading to Daytona, so I don't know if he got stuck in a plane because of the storm out there and they mm-hmm. held him out from landing or anything. So uh, that's what I'm presuming probably happened because he's not going to be able to talk to us if he's stuck on a plane. Is this his oh. first race for the year? Mm-hmm. No. It didn't? No. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's raced probably about three or four of races. Yeah. He always races Texas okay. and he likes to go to Daytona. Anything that is a big long track, he'll do. When he comes to the short races, not the car the car is not good enough power to, to be able to hang with everything. So when you're drafting, he's driving for somebody else, though, right? He's, that's not his stuff. Yeah. It's in association. It's in association with Tom. Uh, uh, no, it's in association. He. It's probably his equipment yeah. that he had, but it's in association with um, Carl Long. Carl okay. Carl Long's organization. Yeah, they're Carl's, they're helping support. I thought it was. Uh, Rab. Yeah. No, it's not Rab. Rab would have Rab's got guy. Scott Legacy driving for him this week. Along with Some reason I thought he had posted that it was like part of them. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's all of Robert's equipment. Yeah, because they still have all their nationwide stuff. They were trying to sell off all the cup stuff. So it looks like uh, what is it this weekend? We got the storm coming in. Um, so it should be hitting probably uh, not a weatherman here, but right on down there maybe Thursday. Where uh, Florida. And then moving on up the coast. No, it's already and, um, in Florida. It's, yeah, it's already there. It's, it's going to be here tonight and tomorrow. Okay, I oh, thought no, it was Thursday in tomorrow Friday. morning. So it's already there. No. So it'll be right no, no, on no, out. No, 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 no. You're wrong. By Saturday, it's going to be. It's going to be it's gone be by out. Saturday. Yeah, it'll but be they're out. saying, they're it's saying out 8 o'clock Friday morning, it'll be right here, right here beside yeah. Norfolk. Okay. We uh, So we got the uh, Wheeland, uh, Southern Wheeland Modified Series. Uh, 
Friday at Caraway in Asheboro. Um, so that will be uh, that'll be a good race. Then you, Friday night you've got um, July Fourth, I believe you've got the Nationwide race, don't you? Friday night is a nationwide yeah. race. Yeah. So you don't have no truck race this weekend. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Saturday night you'll end up having the... Uh, Daytona race. Yeah, the Daytona race. So that will be a um, pretty action-packed weekend. Hopefully everything will get out. Langley will race. And yeah. everybody will be happy. The, racing this weekend? Mm -hmm. you showing up or are we racing? No, we're racing. And they, we will they have yeah. these <laughs> <laughs> at the front gate. The driver, the driver, the driver of the Scott Allen gate Fantasy Club is out. Buying, <laughs> some prefer everybody tonight, okay? Huh? Hmm? I said the driver of the Scott Allen Fan Club is, is buying some prefer everybody. The driver <laughs> of the Scott... Okay. <laughs> I think he's talking about you. <laughs> no, he's talking about you. <laughs> No, he'd be I'm the not the driver. Oh. He's the president. He's well, the I thought he, did all this guy. he can't be a member of his own fan club. Oh, uh, we need every member we can get. <laughs> He's a member of the fan club. Yeah. Come on, Jack. Before we leave, just tell everybody you'll think about it. No. <laughs> or stay on the air. For, this will be this will be longer than the, what is it? The NDA uh, telethon. We'll stay on here 24 hours until. I will. I will. I'll, say, I'll tell you what I will. I should have gotten this before I fixed this battery. He was last week. <laughs> hey, he he passed two cars week. this week. <laughs> okay, that's a deal. You passed I two know, cars. The week before I passed a few. No, 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 no. no. I'm talking about from starting position to ending position. You got to be. Yeah. Right. How long did they wreck? Week? If no, they wreck, the week before, they wreck, they wreck and it still ten. counts. If they wreck and he passes them, you, there's a gray area. This is racing. You've got to say you actually passed them. On the front straightaway, I passed the whole lot the first lap. If he passes, they all pass you right back too. Every one of them. If he you passes two, you'll club. join the club. Yeah. If he, pass if he passes three, you'll be a board member. No, <laughs> no I'm not going that far. But if he passes two, I'll, I'll, you'll be, you'll be in the club. I'll mention the club. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting closer. We've got so now four members I'm in the club. I'm gonna have to sandbag and qualify. Oh yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> wait a minute now. Uh, wait, no, it's already down now. We got no, no, wait, 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 wait. How do you sandbag from the back? <laughs> I can go back a little further. The only way you can sandbag from last place is to be one lap down. You go far down. Is it bad? Is it? I don't know a whole lot about race, but is it bad when the pace cars beep it for you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. Sorry. Mind you, I was harder with him. <laughs> so I had to be oh, no, he's sorry, he's back. That, that sort of reminds me of that old Rash Rambler song. <laughs> beep, beep. I see, I, see, I see it when they qualified, though, right? I saw Scott go this way, and here come another one this way. I mean, they're all about, and it looked like they went around you in the back when they were qualified. They passed you in the too? It was by, close. By the way, just in, in, in justification for him, he was actually on. The thing in fifth place during qualifying. There was only five cars. Well, I'm just saying. He, yeah, he was like the fifth car out. <laughs> I just said I was trying to. I was trying Did to. Did you get a picture? <laughs> I mean, build the website. You know, Scott Allen fifth place out of five cars. <laughs> I would y'all tell uh, Scott next this weekend when you go, make sure somebody takes a picture as long as you're in the first group going out. I try not to run over any officials. <laughs> How long did it take before you realized it was me? <laughs> when you were on my foot. <laughs> and I was probably saying some bad things. I was like, who the? I was, I was laughing. I was he kept backing up, and I turned a little further. He'd back up some more. I'd turn a little further. And he kept pulling the guy, and I can't even see him looking down at me like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> I just started laughing. I said, you know, who the You couldn't tell? You, know, on? you couldn't tell by the uniform? Well. He was the only one that wasn't 16 years old. You know, <laughs> he was a big kid. No, there was well, a, there was a couple guys out there looking older than him. No, there's there's a lot of us that are older, but uh, yeah, there, there was one guy. You know, he was yeah. He what y'all tell? Was it Patrick, the uh, draft university guy? When he come over here, and he said, "Man, they talking about you." <laughs> Sergio. 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 Sergio has a trip now. I want to wish him good luck. I think he's got some things in the works, um, you know, with some rides. So yeah, he's uh, working on a truck ride. He said, "Let's uh, let's hope and uh, we'll see him." We see a lot of guys with the drive for diversity move up and and move on. Kyle Larson, Kyle Larson was one of them. Ryan Ellis or 
And they come from there. Well, Bubba guy. Wallace. See? Bubba Wallace. And you go ahead and mention what? Our our new friend. Bo's grandma. Oh, I don't even know her name. Jackie. <laughs> Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Jackie. Jackie. Yes, she'll like the plug. I know. <laughs> We're getting real good. Well, I'm drinking I, drink. I can't. I can't I, if I went to points. if I went to Brian Morehouse's Facebook site, I couldn't name all the women on there. Mm. It's three thousand five hundred ninety-two women. <laughs> no, just people. But that's the reason I stayed home last Friday night with nothing to do. All three thousand five hundred ninety-two friends had something else planned. No. I wish my life was as good as y'all think it is. <laughs> My my life tomorrow night is I leave right after uh, or race. Oh. I mean after work. Um, Sobo. Uh, then I head on down to Caraway. Saturday night is uh, East Lincoln, and Sunday's out on the boat on Lake Norman. And then uh, I gotta come home. So. And, and exactly where was the tough tough part of all that? <laughs> hey, 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 I had one of the nationwide officials. He said this is really a gravy job, but you get here on Thursday, and between Thursday and Sunday, I might work four hours, sometimes five. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's going for. No, now, I, I, now I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to say something about tell that. Tell me, I've big seen, guy. Tell I've me. See, I've seen them guys. They they, they do a little more work in that than that. Tell me if I didn't hustle the other night. Yeah, well, you, now, you, 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 you told me when you walked by me, I'm just acting like I know what I'm doing. That's well, like, you didn't have to tell everybody. <laughs> what did that tell you? Walk around with a piece of paper in your hand and nobody ever questioned you. I did. You can just walk around, people go, he's working. I ain't going to ask him nothing. That's what I always do. <laughs> always have a piece of paper about I started him. to ask one of the bigger officials who was standing there at one time. I was sorry, to, I, I, you know, if I didn't know how things were going in with NASCAR right now, I'd have probably done it. <laughs> but I was going, what? what Brian tells us he don't ever do nothing around here. What is, what is, <laughs> they don't agree with you. <laughs> What's his job title? I I eat that every time we go out to eat, we go out to eat the night before the race. Morehouse, you don't do nothing. I drive the vehicle. I what pick every, vehicle? What Well, we all ride together. But you know, from the airport, they'll you, we'll usually have a SUV or something, mm -hmm. and I'll drive and. I wait on everybody, everything else. That, that's part of work. Am I right? I don't get to sit in the back and sleep in the airport. Like well, then just remember you got to load and unload the trailer. Oh, oh yeah. So. And he's witnessed that. Who was by themselves in Richmond? Well, everybody, <laughs> I took everybody to the airport, and I came back, and there was like five of us left. And because everybody, we, we ran the next day, the next morning, and they flew on out. And, um, man, people don't realize how much it takes to get there and unload. And so load everything you know, yeah. back up. That's the most work to unload. And it's unload like a traveling. It's it, and, and somebody once told me this. They were like, it's almost like a traveling circus. You go, you pop up it the is. tent, you put Not your like it out is. <laughs> and it, I didn't realize that. And when I was out at Langley, we had it made. That, that was just wide open for me to come right in there. <laughs> yeah, we should have came in there. <laughs> we should have came in there, but I left out. I got, I, I think lightning used to tell me it was kind of easy too, because all he does is there. Oh, lightning! <laughs> I'll see him this weekend. So oh. You're talking. You're lightning on the national, uh, national, yeah, truck driver. Yeah, well, here's a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Still, well, he used to be a media. couple official. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's got a gravy guy. now. Great he's on guy. South Side, dude. Yeah. He's a yep. Reese Bugs. Bugs, Bugs Harrifield. Yep. Bugs is a trip. God, you get him. You get him talking. He's got 120 stories. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, I need to get going here because uh, I got to get back to Southampton County. We you hope. Care? Huh? Don't you say nothing. I gotta go buy your car for the first. All right. <laughs> oh, hey, we'll ride this he's, he's, looking, he's looking for a new or a used car that gets good gas mileage for all the driving he's gonna be doing. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to that truck. So you guys look out and hook him up. Yeah. Where are you driving to? Well, I mean, I got six caraways this year. I averaged it out. I think I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have to put six thousand miles on the car driving. See, I always flew, and now you know, living back here in Virginia, I'm driving quite a bit. So, yeah, it will be. Yep. I have to hook up my buddy over here who was driving. What were you driving the other night? A Mercedes? I don't know. I got a Land Rover, a Range Rover tonight. I need to go work for him. That's what I need to do. <laughs> do you think well. I'd learn it? <laughs> no, you're I learned how to change the battery. I mean, he can drive everybody else's vehicle. He ain't driving his own. I forget. Who actually broke the battery terminal when they went to test it? Uh, we won't get it into was, that. It was a bad connection. That's why it wouldn't start. I found it. <laughs> So he was the one that actually broke it. It won't my shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sign off this thing. All right, everybody, we're going to go. I think we're going to wind this down finally and get out of here. Everybody have a good week, and we'll catch everybody next week on Let's Talk Racing.
Well, turn sideways. Well, you better get these guys to sign up or something. That, that's what Jack said to do trophy, okay? Remember, goof off. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Races. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peters, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs> driver of the 33 NASCAR late model 2011 Old Dominion Speedway track champion thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing TV I'm Sam Hunt driving 42 car on the thing Let's Talk Racing Hi my name is Natalie Sather I drive the 94 K&N Lady Eagle Safety Wear Butler Built Seats Bell Helmets Hooker Harness Seat Belts Number 94 at South Boston Speedway Be sure to